Good day, guys. You can now emulate Amiga 500 games on your GB300 and SF2000. This isn't from a new multi-core update, but instead from Reddit user TheQ. This new Amiga core is based on the UAE for all Amiga 500 emulator. Even though this new core isn't a part of the custom multi-core firmware, you do still have to have multi-core installed on your GB300 or SF2000 to use it. According to the developer, it requires at least version 0.10, but we'll be testing on the latest version, which at the time of filming is version 0.4.14. Before we try out this new Amiga emulator, we'll go over how to download and install it. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 11 PC now, and to get started, we do have to download a few things. We've just opened up Google Chrome and gone to the Reddit page where this new core was originally announced. Not only do they have the download link, but they also tell you a little bit about it, as well as the issues that it does have, how to install it, but also a bunch of screenshots, which is pretty cool. I will link this Reddit thread down in the description below, so if you do have a play around with this new Amiga core, make sure to drop by and say thank you to the developer. If we go back to the very top, we want to click on the download link, and we just want to download the latest version. At the time of filming, that's version 97. Under assets, we want to get the version for our handheld. It is available for both the GP300 and SF2000, so just make sure you get the correct version for your device. That's pretty much all we need to download for now, but you will need to source your own legally obtained Kickstart ROMs. Both Kick13.ROM and Kick20.ROM. You'll also need some legally obtained Amiga games. All of the games that we've tried had the ADF extension. That does seem to be the universal Amiga ROM extension though. With that said, we can close off Google Chrome and open up our downloads folder. Inside, we should have our new Amiga Core zip file. Just want to right click on it and extract it. If you're on Windows 11, might need to go down to show more options. And you can use the built in extractor, just clicking extract all. But I always like to use 7zip. Just go to extract to. Want to open up that folder. Inside should be a single core file. We want to copy that. Just control A, control C. Next, we want to insert the SD card from our GB300 or SF2000. Again, you do already need to have multi core installed and working on your handheld. Next, we just want to go to our SD card, go to the cores folder. We want to make a new folder. You just right click anywhere. Go down to new and folder. Want to call it Amiga or lowercase. Open up our new Amiga folder and place our core in here. Next, we need to copy the kickstart BIOS files over. I've placed them in my downloads folder, so we'll go back there. Open up my Amiga BIOS folder. So here's the two kickstart ROMs here. Kick13.ROM and Kick20.ROM. Kick13.ROM should be around 256K and Kick20.ROM should be around 512K. Want to copy both of them. Again, Control A, Control C. Go back to your SD card. This time, open up the BIOS folder and paste both ROMs in here. Finally, we need to create our ROMs folder. So go back to the root of your SD card, open up the ROMs folder. Once again, right click anywhere, go new and folder. We want to call it Amiga once again, or lowercase, A-M-I-G-A. And this is where we'll paste all of our Amiga games. I've already got some downloaded, so we'll go to our downloads. And here's all of our ADF files. You'll notice they are all 880K, and that's because they are floppy images. We'll just copy them all, Control A, Control C. Go back to our SD card, go to the ROMs folder, open up the Amiga folder that we just created, and paste them all in here, Control V. The only thing left to do is create our ROM stubs. So once more, go back to the root of the SD card and run the make ROMs list batch file. Just double click on it, should generate all the stubs. And that's it, we can press any key, and we are pretty much done. We'll safely jack our SD card and move back over to our GB300. So we're back on our GB300, and to actually launch one of these new Amiga games, you have to go down to the user ROMs folder, so this one here, press A, and pick the first disc of one of the games. Most Amiga games are multi-disc, but you can get some that emerge into a single disc file, like Rat Trap. If they are multi-disc though, make sure to always launch the first disc file. We'll start off with another world. You can see I've got two copies. The first one is disc one or disc A, and the second one is disc two or disc B. So launch disc A, just press A. It doesn't take too long to load, but you should eventually get to three shades of gray, and then hopefully it will load the game. And it looks like it's working for us. If instead you just get a black screen here, but you can still see the UI at the bottom and pressing start brings up the on-screen menu and select brings up the on-screen keyboard, then you most likely have a bad Kickstart ROM. If that's the case, source a better Kickstart 13 and Kickstart 20 ROM. We'll quickly go over the controls. By default, the D-pad is in joystick mode with A and B mapped to the joystick buttons. Y swaps discs around. As mentioned, most games are multi-disc and occasionally at the top of the screen, it will say insert disc two or disc three or disc four. When that comes up, just press the Y button once. The developer mentioned the X button is usually mapped to jump, and I have found that to be the case in most games. The L and R buttons on the back are both left and right click respectively. When you first load most games, you will need to left click once to actually get into them. But again, this can differ depending on the game that you're playing. If you press L and R together at the same time, it toggles mouse mode, where the D-pad now moves the mouse cursor around. 
Pressing L and R once more will swap it back to joystick mode. So we're on the crystal screen, we'll just press left click once, which is L. And that should take us to the actual game. And here we go. We're in another world. There is sound, by the way, but I do have it turned down a little bit. So this is the opening cutscene to another world. You can see it is graphically buggy. It's not drawing all of the textures or anything like that. It's more just line art or wireframe. But it does still play fairly smoothly considering. Unfortunately, this game does go to a black screen after this cutscene. So we'll quit out of this one and we'll try a different game. You can just press start and select to bring up the normal pause menu. This one here. The developer mentioned that save states should work, but they may be a bit buggy in some games. There's no harm in trying them, but probably don't rely on them too much. Before we quit out, there's also a main settings menu you can bring up by pressing start. The main things you're going to want to change here are frame skip, sound, and CPU. Frame skip is fairly self-explanatory. If the game's running a bit slow, increase that to 3 or 4. Otherwise, keep it at the default too. You can toggle sound on or off, which should help with performance. And I believe CPU should also speed up the emulation. I'm not entirely sure what this actually does though. I'm also not too sure what Y offset does. And I'm assuming floppy is the emulation speed. I always just keep it at 1x and I haven't had any issues. There's also settings, we'll go down. So you can swap between the Kickstart 1.3 and 2.0 ROMs. They're the two ROM files that we copied over. You can enable slow RAM, reset the machine and save config. In all the games that I've tested, I haven't had to change any of these. But if your game's not working, you may need to play around in this menu a little bit. There's also about, and it just tells you a little bit about the developers. Since it does say SF2K at the very top, I'm guessing this is the specific SF2000 and GB300 build about screen. We'll quit out of this game though, so start and select, and go down to quit. Another fun one that I was excited to try was Rat Trap. This was the original game that Krusty's Funhouse was based on. So if you've ever played Krusty's Funhouse on any of the many systems it was ported to, this will seem fairly familiar. So again on this screen, just press left click once. So the title screen looks really, really nice. No issues here. We'll press A. And unfortunately, you can see our main playable character is invisible. The game does still play. It's a bit jerky. But yeah, you can't actually see where you are. Thankfully, in this game, the character is always dead center in the screen. So you can still sort of play. If I press A on here, it should go into the level. There we go. So this is area one. We'll load level one. Again, it should be roughly centered. And we were. And you can see it's pretty much identical to Krusty's Funhouse. So the X button at the very top is mapped to jump. As mentioned, that must be a fairly common button. And it looks like we finished, so we'll go back to the door. And if I can get there, there we go. So technically playable, but not very enjoyable with the missing sprite. It does seem to run full speed though. Very, very impressive. We'll quit out of this one. And we'll try our last game, which actually does run almost perfectly. And that is Street Rods 2. So Street Rods 2 is a really, really awesome DOS game. And this is actually my first time playing it on the Amiga. It does look really, really good on this. The UI at the bottom lets you know that it is still loading and it hasn't hung, so that's good. As long as those numbers are moving, something is happening. Here's the California Dreams logo. I do have the sound off, but it does have a banger soundtrack as well. So it is still loading, we'll just leave it for a second. It's worth noting the DOS version does not have this cool little cutscene. This is special to the Amiga version. And at the very top it says insert disc 2. This is a 2 disc game. So to swap discs is super easy, just press the Y button once. It should say swap to disc 2. Give it a second for it to actually load. Once it disappears, we'll just press left click once. So it is still loading, just be patient once again. And we're in the game. So this is another copy protection screen. It would normally say what's the fourth word on the first line on the 19th page of the manual. And if you get it wrong, you can still play a short demo of the game, but you can't actually 100% beat it. But it looks like Quartex has diddled this one and we should just be able to press okay. So I am in joystick mode. Now, if you're wondering how do we enter text, pressing select brings up an on-screen keyboard. Thankfully, most games don't use the keyboard very often, but for this one here, it wants us to enter our name. You don't have to enter a name, you can just click OK, but we'll try enter it anyway. You use the D-pad to select which letter you want and press A to actually enter the letter. So we'll try and enter S, J, S, L. There we go. Just press select again to close the on-screen keyboard and move our D-pad and press OK. And yeah, it works really well. So again, we are still in joystick mode. If we press L and R, it does toggle to mouse mode. I also closed out of the newspaper because that's right click. But we are in mouse mode. You can see the cursor moves way slower. So for this game specifically, I would recommend sticking with joystick mode. There we go, much faster. We'll just buy our first car. If you've never played this game, I would highly recommend it. You buy, sell and race old cars. I guess we'll go with a Ford Falcon. That's all we can afford. You can click see the car. There it is there. It's an oldie, but we'll give it a go. 
You can change the gearbox, swap out the engine, change the tires, modify the body, change the color, all that kind of fun stuff. But I think we'll leave all that and we'll go to race. Click on the outside of the garage or the shed. You got a neat little cutscene where you're driving to the local burger joint. Here it is. Burger's bungalow. Click on the car. We'll try an aqueduct race for pink slips. That means if I win, I get his car, and if he wins, he gets my car. Bit risky, but he agreed. So here it is here. You want to hold up to accelerate and press A as soon as he puts his hand up. So now we do have an automatic transmission, so we don't have to keep changing gears. But if you had a manual one, you'd press A to change up a gear and B to go back down a gear. So this is a really slow car and I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose. <laughs> it doesn't look too good. There's a concrete slab in the middle, got to avoid that. You can see it's not running full speed but it is still definitely playable. If we press start, change the frame skip up to four maybe, that is way faster. I'm pretty sure I've lost, so I might just flip my car. And... Bang. This is currently the only way to play Street Rods 1 or 2 on your GB300 or SF2000 handhelds. This wasn't possible previously. Overall, this is an extremely impressive emulator for the GB300 and SF2000 handhelds. I'm extremely impressed with how well Amiga 500 games actually run on this. It is worth noting there are a few different Amiga 500 revisions back in the day, and this specific Amiga 500 core only supports games targeted towards the original Amiga chipset, and not the advanced graphics architecture. So if you are looking for games, find ones that mention OCS, and not AGA. As mentioned, this new core currently isn't included in the latest versions of multi-core, but hopefully it does get added to the next release. Even if you're not nostalgic for the Amiga 500 and you've never played it before, I would still recommend checking this core out. It is lots of fun. So again, a huge thank you to Reddit user TheQ for porting this one over and sharing it with everybody. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.